This programme is an Orange Bag Media production. I'm John Hindorf. You probably all know the Belgian city of Spa, world-renowned, among other things, for its thermal baths. Not far from there is the town of Malmedy. The Malmedy Cathedral, the Abbey, and a whole lot of other historic buildings grace the town. It's the 18th century. It was written about the inhabitants of Malmedy that they were honest, skillful, opulent, gracious, sociable, and courteous towards foreigners. Well, that's true to this day, as this weekend they're welcoming drivers from all over the world at the nearby Spa Francorchamps circuit for the first ever TCR Spa 500. This is a really single race event. It's not part of a series or something like that. Only TCR cars, 500 laps maximum. Uh, or 23 hours maximum. Uh, yeah, and at the end, who is uh, which is the first? Yeah, that's the car that wins. On the Thursday before race weekend, all the cars went on a little trip. We had the parade at Thursday. That was a really big event. A lot of people in uh, in Malmody because we started here at the circuit. One parade, one line to Malmody. Uh, the cars were uh, presented over there, the drivers were presented over there, there was an autograph session, uh, yeah, it was really great over there. I, I think the drivers really loved it. Although other series hold a parade to and from the track, they've never been to Malmody before. The people in the region of the Ardennes are very happy about their endurance motorsport. We are reviving the tradition of touring car endurance racing at the circuit of spa francorchamps -Cachon. so a parade needed to be part of this program. And what scene could be better than this beautiful city of uh, Malmedy? Circuit commentator is convinced of how important this parade is. First edition of this race, 500 laps, 23 hours race, of course, and it was really, really important to have this kind of parade. Why? Because it's the opportunity for all those cars to come and see the public, to see the fans, of course. Uh, some fans will go to the track during the weekend, uh, others won't go to the track, so it's very important to have them here to make a kind of party, a first party, of course, for this race. Drivers love the opportunities to meet the local fans and are excited about the upcoming race. Of course, I think a privilege to be here and uh, to do uh, at least 125 laps because we are with four drivers. I'm here with Ivo Breukers, I'm here with Rick Breukers and with uh, Pepe Oriola, who I uh, called myself uh, to be a member of our team. Let's wait to see, but I'm very excited. It looks like spa weather, so you never know. It could be wet, it could be dry and it could be both. Being here in Malmody, not just for sure, however. A part of the official scrutineering of the TCR Spa 500 are done here on the city square of Malmody with uh, the crowd involved. Our scrutineers are right now checking the cars uh, under the tents. And, uh, well, it's, it's a big part of taking part in the race uh, this weekend. So what's the outlook for the weekend? We know that we'll have a, a Belgian weather this weekend here in Spa. It's uh, always the case, of course. Uh, some rain uh, expected for Monday, uh, for Friday for the qualification, for Saturday start of the race, and some, ra some rain also uh, for Sunday for the end of this race. We hope that everything will be all right, but those cars, those drivers will have a typical Belgian weather. Qualifying was held on Friday. Yeah, qualifying we, we did struggle a little bit. Um, we have the, there's a couple of drivers here we haven't spent much time on the dry track, uh, including myself. So um, not quite where we want to be, but uh, for, it's, it's a huge race here. So I'm sure we can make up a few spots uh, along the way. So looking forward to it. Yeah, it was uh, it was really exciting qualification. We had mixed uh, conditions. 
But we had a good strategy, started off with wets in the rear and new slicks in the front and uh, in the end I did two laps with new slicks uh, all around. We are pole in AM so it's really good and then third in total so really good. Yeah, it was uh, not easy because uh, we started in wet conditions and uh, the track was drying up. So uh, in the beginning I was, uh, was on the rain tires in the rear and slicks in the front. And uh, during the qualifying session we went to full uh, slick. And uh, yeah, in the end, uh, yeah, well, from the beginning I, I pushed hard and was nearly every lap on uh, P1. And uh, especially the last lap uh, improved uh, by two seconds. So uh, yeah, we start from pole position, uh, big compliments. Uh, it was good the racing team. Not easy to set your fastest lap on a wet track. Uh, so, you know, we went out on slick tires on a track that was still uh, pretty wet. It was, you know, drying. And if you weren't picture perfect on the right line, uh, it was very slippery. So I, I turned in for uh, campus and got a big slide on my fast lap and uh, went off the edge of the, uh, the, the gravel uh, in campus. And so that was my best lap, uh, which I made a mistake on. Uh, I'll fully admit to it. When I went out, uh, the rears were still on, uh, on the slick tires. Uh, most of them, most of the people on track were on, uh, on rain tires on the rear. Uh, and the last corner was still too wet. There was just no way uh, I could avoid the, the spin once when it started sliding. Uh, but it was a really small spin and uh, nothing happened because it was a slow corner. Um, and for the rest, I think it was a clean qualifying with a pretty good lap on the end, so I'm happy about that. Uh, we had a difficult uh, qualifying. We had the um, wrong choice of tyre, so we are, I think we are stronger than we can see now uh, on the qualifying. On the grid, drivers who are getting ready to go into the car, but also competitors who are visiting the track on their weekend off. It's kind of um, my schedule, so um, I have uh, at least I have one free weekend, so I'm really enjoying it. Uh, I have a lot of time in the car, time on track all over the world uh, since the beginning of this year, and it's really exhausting. So I take my time to come down, but uh, still to be here to see some of my mates and crossing the fingers for them. Try now before the start of the event, but still the hardest question to answer is what teams and drivers expect from this event. You don't know. This uh, is Spa, it's Spa Francochamps. What's what's the expectation? It's going to be. It's a beautiful track with uh, changing weather conditions. So, what are the expectations? It will be tough. It's always difficult to say uh, uh, what your expectations are because you never know what the competition is doing. But I came here uh, just uh, to bring a trophy home. So uh, I saw the big one there. That's an interesting one. <laughs> uh, expectation: try to finish the race uh, without spending any time in the pit. We start from P1, but uh, in the end uh, the race is 500 laps or 23 hours, so uh, it can happen a lot. The field is on their warm-up lap without the number 125. The Audi not able to depart the start grid. Marshall's having to give the Baz Kooten entry uh, a little bit of a help to get off the circuit. With the main straight clean again, muscles are flexed, hands back on the steering wheel, Safety car is off the track and the full grid, minus one, is ready to start the first ever Hankook powered TCR Spa 500. As the lights go out, the battle starts immediately. Teams have to be aware this isn't a sprint race, but an endurance race. The start was quite uh, aggressive for everybody. Uh, I don't go very aggressive because I don't want to have a crash because uh, I have four teammates it's waiting for me to give the card to him to go outside. So at the beginning, I go very, very gentle. At the front of the field, the yellow number 175, NKPP Cooper loses a position, even though the VMAX number 85 is the first to go by the pole sitter. It's the GDL Team Australia number nine that seems very determined to take the lead. The start of the race, uh, we're re really good. Uh, we, we were starting P3 and uh, managed to overtake on the first lap, so I was in P1. But uh, we had a small setup issue on the car because we haven't tried this car on, on dry uh, conditions after a rebuild. So uh, we were eating up our front tires. Yeah, I had a good good run. You know, I had the boost built up in the car, and I didn't think anybody else did. So, yeah, we had a good run. Those guys are really good, good to race with. We had a little bit of rubbing and got up to second. So. Good news for the 125, it's in the race now. 
but second position that the VMAX number 85 took a few moments ago wasn't held for long as the 101 Red Camel is now back up to second position closing up to the race leader well Spa is amazing I love Spa and the TCR is a nice class so uh, it's not that much cost but uh, we got uh, really good uh, time on track and uh, Spa is amazing it's Pepe Oriola in that number 101 Red Camel Cooper and he claims the lead. Rory tries to stay close, misses the bus stop chicane and that's another position lost for the number 9 GDL Audi. The problem with the car is uh, it uh, uses the front tyres too much and then it heats them up. We can't get the, the rear to rotate so uh, uh, we tried to fix it yesterday but it has been raining here all our test sessions so uh, we didn't know where to go. Number 175 wasn't able to hold on to their pole position. It was pretty much what the team expected, though, and that's why they have a livery like this. Uh, because we thought there were uh, 40 professional teams and us, <laughs> and us being amateurs, so we thought we would drive in the rear. So like a sort of, uh, well, the guy, the guy who picks up the mess, and then we came to the idea to, to do a, the Dutch equivalent of the RAC, uh, which is the Wegenwacht, so that's why we came with the idea, and a lot of gin tonic. <laughs> and perhaps the same brainstorming session also contributed to the roadside assistant telephone, which is actually able to communicate with the driver. Hard fight for second place between the number 85 and the DG Sport Peugeot 308. It was difficult uh, for the first run uh, with my, my tyre, so uh, a lot of traffic, uh, so... It's, it's not easy, but uh, we have a good chance uh, for the race. Behind that battle, in fourth, the AC Motorsport number eight Audi. Stefan Perrin among the driving lineup just a month ago during a practice session at Barcelona. In the pit lane, he was knocked down by another competitor. It's great to see him back competing. Yes, it's very uh, incredible to back on track. Uh uh, so so quickly uh, because uh, at the hospital they say me that my season is uh, completely finished. Uh, not Austin, uh, not, uh, not maybe not uh, Dubai, and I'm uh, I'm here, and it's fantastic. Yeah. First car in for a fuel stop, the VMAX number 85 Opel Astra. I think we burn a little more fuel than everyone else. I don't know. My first time with a TCR car, so I don't know. I may not be using uh, as good a technique as the other guys. Oh no, drama for the NKPP number 175. Yeah, Harry had a good stint. It was the first stint of the race. And he missed the corner in Eau Rouge. Very fast corner uphill. And he got oversteer and he crossed over the track into the tire barrier. It was a very big hit. I saw the video, the footage from the, from the organization. It was a very, very big hit. So the car is done. The car is ending. And Harry's still okay. Teams used the resulting code 60, where the cars are not allowed to drive faster than 60 kilometers per hour, to do their pit stops. The GDL team also taking the time to change the setup on that number nine Audi. We tried to change a little bit what we had time to do here in the pit. Uh, the other driver is now in the car still. Uh, he's doing okay, but uh, he, he doesn't have any setup issues, but uh, we'll see when he comes back. Two hours of racing, 41 laps completed. That's a couple of laps shy of our goal of 500 laps. Let's see where everyone's standing. Red Camel Jordan NL team has a 41 second lead over the AC Motorsport number eight entry. Third, the number 131 Cupra from Top Car. Uh, that's Pro's first and third, Pro-Am in second, and in fourth position overall, the first Am entry. In the subclasses, Red Camel number 101 lead the Pro Cars over the 131 Top Car and DG Sport number 308. AC Motorsport number 8 leads the Pro-Am class ahead of Teamwork Huff number 22 and the VMAX number 85. As for the Ams, it's the third Autosport number 54 Audi over Holmgaard's number 2 entry and in third the Macau PS Racing number 853. This is Endurance. We have three persons that are responsible for strategy and communication in our pit villa all the time. So we can see all the action in pit lane. So who's doing penalties, who's doing pit stops, who's doing tire changes. We follow our competitors as much as we can. Uh, so we learn from their strategies and uh, adapt our strategies in case it's required.
There are only a few tracks in the world that need no introduction to racing drivers. Spa is a track that speaks to their imagination even before they get here. I've always wanted to uh, race in Spa and we've got this opportunity. Uh, you know, obviously when we first, when I first went out, it was a bit daunting to do Eau Rouge flat out, but um, it was fun. Coming here, I knew it was a, an amazing track and uh, it's, it's, to learn it in the rain is a whole different dynamic of learning a track, so it's been uh, very difficult, but uh, this, this race now is uh, a completely dry track, so it's going to be interesting to learn that as well, so uh, yeah, we'll see how the setup goes there. I love to hear because uh, Spa circuit, you know, uh, this is the amazing circuit in the world. And uh, also the 24 hours race is uh, very exciting for us. So what makes this track so special? Oh boy, about a thousand things, but it's Spa. I mean, it's a big track, it's, it's large, it's fast, uh, it's technical, but yeah, mainly it's fast and it's big and there's just no really no other track exactly like it anywhere. Uh, especially the up and downhill and uh, the mix from uh, very fast corners and slow corners and also the, the conditions. Uh, now it's dry but uh, uh, for sure we will get some uh, some rain shower tomorrow or maybe during the night, we don't know and uh, that, that makes it special. Overall leader, Red Camel Jordan number 101. In the car at the moment, Tom Coronel, who was a little bit caught out when the Code 60 came and he had to jump into the car quickly. There was some panic because of the Code 60. I had to get in, so there was some panic, but uh, everything was under control. No, I had a good stint. I mean, it was the first time I was in the car on the dry. I felt very confident, uh, like uh, Radio, also like Blanchimont was every time easy flat. So I was like, oh, OK, that's, uh, that's a good one. I could play with the car and this was a nice feeling. The VMAX number 85, now seventh overall. Remember, they led the race for a short time on that first lap. Yeah, we're having a little bit of an issue with the car. Something with the, with the wheel bearing, so hopefully it's nothing major. But hopefully we can maintain in the top five, which is our goal for the race, and then see where we're at at the end. QSR has a specific endurance setup on the number 54 Audi. We are really focusing on long run pace, setting the car up, not for like the one lap, majorly uh, single lap pace, but to be good to the tires over the full stint. Uh, and so uh, that was nice to verify that, that we had a good race car over the long run. We've got a nice conservative setup on it right now. If it rains later, I think we'll be in good shape. So we are now in the position quite well, but now it's too early to say, but we are happy now for the second. Now is the third stint. So I hope we can have a good race, a good result. Great battles going on, making the Spa 500 a joy to watch. Some of the drivers have already finished their first stint, others getting ready to do their first racing miles. I'm excited. Um, first time in this weekend in dry conditions, so hopefully we find a good pace and keep it, keep it clean. As dusk settles over the village of Francorchamps in the Belgian Ardennes, Drivers are told to put their lights on, but further Autosport have other things to worry about. Uh, well, we lost the ball joint about 20 minutes into my stint, so uh, I was just trying to manage the tires, doing the you know dusk from daylight into darkness, and first times, uh, first laps driving around here at night, so it was good and felt good. The 54 has spent about half an hour in the care of their pit crew. When the car gets back on the track, it collides with the Baz Kooten number 125. Both cars continue after they've been checked by their teams. Darkness at Spa, and driving for Charlie Putnam is a little harder than he expected. We had one small error that uh, was unforced, and that was we didn't mount the uh, auxiliary lights when I came in for fuel and tires, because we weren't doing a driver change. The guys thought, oh, it'll take too long. As long as I had traffic around me, it was pretty good. And there's, oddly enough, with as few cars as there are, there's a fair amount of traffic out there. So. Whether the car's behind me or ahead of me, it, it helped me to have more light to drive, so I tried to stay in the traffic a bit. Meanwhile, the number eight crew resort to race tip to get their car back on track. Yeah, probably a little touch with another car. This is a particular space, uh, spare parts, uh, because it, this is really light, and uh, I think it's broke also like this with a little touch. The drivers from Macau PS Racing are new to racing at Spa and new to racing at night. I'm the first time to come here for racing, so I'm not used to the circuit. And then in night time, my the headlight maybe not so stronger. I missed the apex. 
and then I turn the corner and uh, go, uh, go straight very fast. They go a bend to the wall, and then the car uh, have to repair. Yeah, I think the suspension, the wheel, and then the low arm bar stabilizer have to change. And the front and the rear one bar also have to change. The team from Macau are in the pit with a long repair ahead of them. Whilst the car from the other Chinese Special Administrative Region, Hong Kong, also missed the corner, ends up in the barrier. Only a small sideways hit, though, so the team got the car back out on track after 11 minutes of work. Past the 100 lap mark and the number 101 Red Camel Jordan is still leading the race after five hours of competition. They've got a whole lap over the number 131 Top Car Sport Cupra. The prime entry of AC Motorsport, the Audi number eight running third. In the subcategories, the pro class led by the overall leader, the 101, the 131 Top Car second and Peugeot number two of DG Sport third. In Pro-Am, it's number eight of AC Motorsport that leads, Viper Nisa number 65 second, and Teamwork Huff number 22 in third. The Ams are doing well too, with Holmgaard number two leading the class, followed by the number 110 of Lestrup Racing and the number 46 from Burton Racing. There are different brands of car on the track, but they're all in the TCR category, and they're all fun to drive. Oh, it's great. I mean, they're, they're front-wheel drive, they're fantastic. I spend a lot of time in GT4 cars, uh, so rear-wheel drive, very different. But these are lightweight, uh, high downforce, which through corners like Blanchimont and Eau Rouge at Spa, what more could you ask for? It's, it's super fun. I'm still adapting, yeah, so it's hard. I haven't, I haven't quite got it figured out yet. Uh, I drove touring cars many, many years ago a bit, but touring cars have advanced in the last you know, 15, 18 years, so they're much better today, and you can drive them a lot harder. So I'm learning that the car what the car's limits are. You need to drive the car very, very eager. And if you can do this, you can drive every car. And you can see here the, 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 the high-level drivers, the, the, the Oriola, Ascona, Coronel, etc. Very good, Jaap van Lagen, of course, in our car, Christian Frankenhout. These guys can run the car very fast. We were able to run up front with those guys and the, the car was working well and everybody raced each other pretty fair. Uh, a couple of the guys got into each other, but not too hard. And, it, uh, it was pretty fun. I mean, I got to admit, I had a lot of fun. The cars lend that. I think they, they lend to good racing because the balance of performance is pretty good. Even though this is a single type of race with just TCR cars, there are still classes within the race. We have divided it into three divisions, which is the Pro, the Pro-Am and the Am. And uh, there, because there was a, a, li a big uh, mix of drivers, a lot of gentlemen and amateur drivers, but we have here pros, and so we have made a, a division in, uh, in that. Uh, to give you an example, if a team has uh, two, or more, two or more professional drivers, they are in the pro category. And if a team, for instance, has all amateur drivers like bronze, they are in the AM category, and the, the other teams are in, in the middle. So that we have uh, an exciting race for all of them. 9 p.m. with 18 hours to go. The third uh, Autosport number 54 is called in. Because of that earlier incident, there's a tail light out. They've managed to collect one from their trailer and install it as Chris Allen reflects on his stint. I mean, definitely not my fault, if you ask me. Of course it was the other guy's fault. <laughs> they gave him the blue flag a couple times and we were, you know, running pretty close to each other and uh, he kind of turned in on me. It's my opinion. And uh, <laughs> we touched and I held it and he didn't. With the light fixed, the new driver arrives at the fuel station, adjusts his rear view mirror, and it falls up and ends up in his lap. The Viper Nisa Racing number 65 is having a good race so far. Uh, I think P2 in class or P3 in class, so not too bad. Car's not the best because we didn't have uh, much uh, dry running for the setup. So it all was raining, in, in, all the practice was in the rain, so uh, the car's not the best, but uh, we just make do with what we can and just keep pushing. The leader in Pro-Am has their team really pushing, and this will cost them the class lead. Normally we, we can put more, more laps, but uh, apparently we lose uh, uh, some fuel on the track, and uh, we have not enough to, uh, to finish the laps, uh, and we stop just at, at the end try of the pit lane. But other cars in the Pro-Am category have problems too. The Wimmerwerk number 33 has had a good stint, but technical issues have put that car in the gravel. Well, it was very weird because I was going to, uh, to, into a right-hand corner and then all of a sudden it was, was like shaking and then the car dropped a little 
in the front, and then there was no steering anymore, and I couldn't go, so I had to stop there and then wait for the for the marshals because I was still strapped in. I said, "Do you see anything? What happened?" And they said, "Yeah, the, the wheel broke." So that was it. The wheel rim is destroyed. The team give the inside of the wheel arch a quick inspection. Seems the only damage was to the rim itself. So a new tyre on, and the TCR Cupra can continue the race. On track, the yellow lights and flags are out again as the Baz Cooten number 125 is having trouble leaving the pit out and needs to be towed back. The driver was not really uh, clear about what he saw, what he felt and what, the, what it causes. Uh, so first we need to find out what it causes and uh, it looks like there's a problem in the, in the power supply for the fuel pumps. Uh, we changed also the coils and some sensors under the hood. Uh, it looks like it's good now. More technical difficulties this time for the VMAX number 85 on the back of a flatbed. We had a little bit of problem with the engine, uh, so we've been struggling a little bit um, actually since for the last couple of days as well with uh, some small uh, hesitation issues. Uh, the car was running really good. Um, first time here, car was running really great. Um, and then just uh, coming out of uh, the source, going up into Eau Rouge, the engine just tightened up just a little bit, um, and then it stopped. Uh, and so I'm not sure exactly what it was, but uh, it's uh, requiring a, a change. And uh, so the guys are working really hard to change the engine out for us right now. Although the 125 is back out again, there's no rest for the Baz Cooten team. The 131 Top Car Cupra was running second. Anti Burry also struggled to get out of the fuel station. Auntie had the, actually the same uh, sort of same issue. After the refuel, uh, it didn't fire up again, so uh, it, sta it stalled at the end of the refuel. We tried to find the, 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 the cause, and it was a broken fuel pump. And it's quite strange, as actually all parts, including fuel pump, filters, etc., were was new in the car. Night racing, always exciting here at Spa. Darkness can bring more mistakes. I was actually on my in-lap, uh, it was the last lap of my stint, uh, our pace was very good and uh, the tires had gone off, I went to turn into the corner, I had no front grip, I hit the green turf on the outside and it sent me for a ride at that point, so uh, just held on and luckily I'm okay and hopefully get the car fixed. Team manager not sure that fixing the car is an option. Well, we're going to have a look at it, but we already did, and uh, I don't think we have all the parts. It would take us a very long time to repair, and can we bring the car safely at the track again? That's another question. It will take us more time to, to see that. And also in the pits, the number 65. We were leading our class, and also I think P2 overall. But then we had some uh, few low fuel pressure warning, so we thought it was uh, maybe low fuel level, so we top up the fuel. But then we still had the warning for the, the few laps, and then we had some search, so in the end the team called it to be safe. We put it in, then we swapped out the fuel filter. Waiting to go in and do their turn behind the wheel, drivers in the pit lane have their seat inserts. Because uh, my teammate is taller than me, so it's better to do it at the back, and so that I can, you know, my, I'm shorter than them. The seat is not movable, so it's quicker to do it like this when we change driver. Paul's going to have to wait a little longer as his car is in the gravel trap. Oh, I think I push a little bit too hard um, on the in lap because I just want to use every bit of the uh, remaining tyres. Um, I overshoot a little bit into the uh, T15, uh, so I went into the gravel. Um, the car was stuck there. Luckily, um, uh, the impact was very soft because of the tire tire walls. I'm so sorry for the mistake, but um, luckily the car is still running. The team did a quick brake change, but they couldn't rest for long. The other teamwork, Huff Motorsport, brought back to the pits. With all the problems ahead of them, it's Holmgard who profits from others' problems. They're holding second overall. After nearly four hours in the pit, the 85 back on track. A good time for us to take a look at the standings. Three o'clock in the morning and the Red Camel 101 Cupra is still leading, now has a five lap lead. The number three way DG Sport Peugeot has taken over in second position. The number two Volkswagen of Holmgard in third. 108 and 308, first and second in the Pro Class, the number 131 in third. The Pro Am number 65 of Vipaniza leads the class there in sixth position overall. Second in Pro Am, the number eight Audi of AC Motorsport, and the teamwork hoof number 852 in third. 
really good run for the AM class entries. Overall, they're third, fourth, and fifth. So in their class, it's Hongard number two leading from Burton 46 in second, Leicester 110 in third. This is endurance. Endurance is uh, teamwork, uh, certainly, and is uh, not driving 100% driving every time like me. <laughs> Always remain a, a, a reserve a little bit a safety margin for, for the car, for yourself, for the team. There's no personal hero here in an endurance race. Drivers have come to Spa from all over the world and they're not just fighting for the result for their team but also for their country. Uh, we have uh, people from all uh, countries, uh, even from uh, Macau, from Hong Kong, from Australia, from New Zealand. Uh, it's, it's amazing. So uh, Belgium, France, Germany, call it, uh, Italy. Uh, so we have also a Nations uh, uh, Cup. And the Nations Cup is for all the teams which have at least three drivers from the same nationality. Kim Holgaard is owner of EXO, who are the sponsors of the Nations Trophy. EXO is a, is a spray, spray uh, a Syria that is uh, all over the world, uh, owned by me. Uh, the relation to the TCR is that uh, I have my own team uh, beside uh, my own company. So um, just to make some fun in uh, all the countries, uh, I decided to sponsor this, uh, this race. Yeah, the Nation Trophy is, uh, I think, a very nice thing. Uh, we have a lot of people from all over the world, uh, I understood. And uh, now we have three Dutch people, so uh, we apply for that uh, rule. And uh, who knows? Originally, the VMAX team didn't qualify for the Nation's Trophy, as they had only two Americans, a Canadian and a Belgian. However, bad luck for that Belgian driver has turned towards their advantage. Our good teammate uh, Ward was running in some support series this weekend and he had a big crash. And then also we have a, a friend of ours, John Miller from the States. Uh, he was driving with his friends from the, with an Audi and then uh, he may come and do some stints with us as well to help us out in case Ward can't drive. And then also maybe so we can we can now with the with the Nations Cup because that's a, that's a nice concept. But John Miller is already in a team that is eligible for the Nations Cup. Charles and Charlie are the two Americans in that car. They wanted a third American to, uh, to also go for the Nations Cup. So I'm happy to help him out. Um, it's a little strange to be driving two cars in the same race, kind of going for the same trophy in both cars but uh, it'll be good fun. As Kim is a sponsor and competitor in this race, will he claim that trophy himself? It could be fun, yes. <laughs> but I don't have three guys from the same country. So it's not possible to take this one. We'll take another one. Which one? We take, we take number one, the general. Others still look in awe to that EXO trophy. It's a fantastic trophy. It, uh, what I want to know is, does the top come off and can we pour beer into it and drink out of it like the Stanley Cup? <laughs> Nighttime racing at the TCR Spa 500, powered by Hankook. You battle the competitors and you have to battle your own fatigue too. Yeah, I'm a bit difficult that one because uh, I didn't sleep uh, at all uh, before that. And um, yeah, I was a bit difficult with the brakes and stuff like that. So, But, but the stint was okay, but uh, could, could be faster. Bad luck has struck Eric. In his stint, he was being overtaken by the VMAX number 85 and there was a collision. I had a small accident with another car and I was driving down to a wood and it was overtaking me on, on the turn three and we hit. I had got by him and then uh, we had his left front, my right rear contact and I kind of ripped the wheels off both cars and we both spun up into the deal. You can actually see it, it blew the wing and the deck back over the the roof there and dented the roof so I mean it's you know 100 and I don't know how fast we're going there mile an hour wise but it's pretty fast so we went and looked at the video up at race control so I, I take the blame I'm the one behind the wheel so um, unfortunately for the I really feel bad for the guys and we had a really good car both teams needed to work on their cars the 85 would not return to the track meanwhile back to green flag racing steady race for the Leicester up number 110 and they've just moved up to third in class. Uh, it's it's uh, fabulous. Uh, these conditions and the track and everything is uh, really exciting. The engineers are really good at uh, putting up the strategy. I think we are an even team and maybe not the peaking, but uh, we are quite even. Into the pit, the GDL number nine. 
well, catching first position by at least 10 seconds a lap. So a bit unfortunate right now, as you can probably see, we had a mechanical issue with the car. It's gone into limp mode. The guys are trying to fix it now and get us back out there and hopefully we can get back up the field again. The other guys might have a mechanical problem and we can get back up there and win the AM series. And indeed, another AM competitor is having problems. Uh, we have a problem with the uh, oil running into the water. So there was a part that was broken that we have to change. Still, we have, I think, seven, eight hours to run. So, of course, we keep on running. And if it can happen for us, it can happen for anybody. So now we just have to go full throttle and see where it takes us. As the light slowly returns to Spa-Francorchamps, that once again changes the dynamic of the race. Everything is going back together to me back again, uh, and then uh, having uh, our our competitor leader leader of the race in front of me, it was really good fun that I can follow his line and his breaking point, and I can learn so much uh, with them. So uh, basically now uh, very good the lines uh, of the race. It's not just light that is returning, but the humidity that we had earlier in the week. It's not fully raining yet, so what tyres do you choose? So I started quite dry with the uh, slick tyres in front and rain tyres in the back. And um, then it started to, this small rain, mist, this mist rain. And uh, we, I was going like that for maybe half an hour and then we changed to full rain tyres. And it was not enough rain, so they wa was worn down. The race leader, one of the earliest to change to full rain tyres, but the Red Camel 101, also one of the first to be called back in again. Yeah, it's called back in because we are not sure about the uh, wear of the, wear of the rain tyres. We called us, but it was raining not quite hard, and we, uh, we, we thought it would rain more, so we wanted to know sure uh, if the wear was not too, too hard to complete this stint. And uh, the wear was, was quite okay, so we, we came in um, to check. Now we know how long we can stay out. With a maximum of six hours left, here's how it stands. Leading overall, still the Red Camel Jordan.nl and still with a five lap lead to second. That's a 308 DG Sport competition entry. Uh, they've got a five lap gap too over the top car 131, who have fought their way back to third overall. The overall top three are all pro cars now, so that's their category, one, two, three as well. In Pro Am, the Viper Nisa Racing number 65 has a four lap lead over AC Motorsports number eight, four laps further back, Teamwork Huff number 852. In the Am category, Burton number 46 now has three laps of a lead ahead of Lestrum number 110, past Cooten 125 running in third. Plenty of drivers here who are normally found behind the wheel of TCR cars in competition like the WTCC. I just uh, drive in WTCC during uh, five, five years and after I drive uh, uh, to TCR and I win the, the first uh, European Championships with TCR, with DJ Sport also, with the Opel. But this isn't a sprint race, it's an endurance race. Normally we have a, a sprint race which is just 12 laps, 25 minutes but then nothing is left of the car because uh, with us it's uh, making room, uh, you know, we make from a small hole a big, uh, big gap, so uh, no, this is, this is a little different style of racing. It's a, it's a little bit different, but at the end of the day, uh, everyone's still running pretty quick, uh, and the car's very consistent, so I think, I'd say we're running faster than I thought we were, and the car's been uh, uh, very, very consistent, and so, yeah, it's been uh, different, but also not that different, I guess. The endurance race, we, we have uh, to, Think about uh, the, 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 the endurance of the car, uh, the li uh, reliability and also the strategy. So not just uh, for, for fast lap time, also for the, for the stable and the constant uh, lap time. Not everybody are used to these TCR cars. This is my first race in a TCR car. Together with Melvin and Farik, uh, we came in because uh, Douglas, the team principal, asked us to come and join to show uh, what uh, we Malaysians can do in the international stage. Um, I have raced a lot of TCR before, but um, uh, for endurance race, um, I've done a few only. So, and, and this is the first time I come to Spa to race a TCR car. So, uh, as the race goes so on, I think every one of our drivers are, are learning and driving quicker and quicker. And this race will make history for Macau Motorsport. This is my our our Macau team lineup. We are the first time ever. Uh, nobody in Macau driver will come uh, uh, to Europe to make 
so big, uh, the, those kind of uh, big uh, uh, series or big uh, races, we make the lineup, so we are very happy. And the new drivers love racing here. Oh yeah, it's just one of the most fun things I've ever done in my life. I haven't been uh, this deer in the headlights in a long time, uh, trying to get up to speed. Uh, but it's, it's, it's been amazing and uh, it's not over yet, so uh, we'll see how it goes. Cooper number 101 has been leading for most of the race. That makes the team very proud indeed. I think a good strategy. Also, we, we have some good drivers, we are fast drivers, and uh, I think we take the game in the, in the beginning of the game, of the match, and now we, uh, now we have to keep our position. Not so long ago, the GDL number nine spent one hour 45 minutes in the pits. 20 minutes after it returns to the track, it's back in again. Yes, because before uh, there is one problem in water pump, change the water pump, but uh, the initial problem is uh, for the Audi guy is the turbo. Now I try to change the turbo. It's a long work, it's around one hour and a half. The team seem to be able to handle the water on the track, but when it gets into the engine, it's game over. There was a mechanical device inside the engine that uh, break down, and if this breaks down, you mix uh, oil and water in the engine. and. Uh, Oil together with water doesn't work. We try to drain it, uh, empty out all the water, put on some new, but when, when, when this happened, there's so much um, stuck in all the hoses and in the cooling system that it's impossible to drain. And to not damage the engine, we decide to stop. Earlier in the race, the top car number 131 entry was fighting for the lead. Those heady heights, though, seem a long way away now. We had a technical problem during the night. The guys fixed it really quickly, but still, uh, we drop, dropped enough back that we, we really cannot attack by driving. So, uh, yeah, now it's just to keep the car in one piece and bring it home. Rain or shine, day or night, always action to be found on track. Is the race leader, Rick Breukers, off the normal racing line? Well, of course, if it's raining, you, you should follow the rain lines because on the ideal line, you have a lot of rubber from, uh, from the cars who drove in the, in the dry. Uh, if, you, if you go outside the line, you, you find more grip, and uh, that's, that's why I was using those lines. And they work pretty well because our pace was really strong. The number 852 entry from Teamwork Huff Audi has had their door mirrors folded inwards, and it's been like that for some time. I did uh, my last last in the previous team without the mirror already. So before my second last in at night, uh, um, beforehand, uh, the car had a, have a small impact. Uh, um, before pitting, so the mirror gone, and then we, we, I think the last eight hours we had no mirror. And for the last two hours, the number nine Audi was back in the pits being worked on, but not anymore. The car is out again, yeah. We, um, the turbo blew, so the boys worked really hard to get that fixed. I think we're out for maybe an hour and 40 minutes, but um, the car's going good, so happy days. Alex has just got some new tyres, and he's back out on track in the 125 but not for very long. The driver went out on uh, new rain tires and in, um, in the Blanchimont corner, he lost the rear end of the car. It, was, uh, it, it snapped away uh, and he couldn't control the car anymore and he went in, into the tire barrier. Good news is that Alex isn't hurt, but the car is badly damaged. Driver Kevin C is knocking on the door of other Audi teams to try and find some spare parts. That is the true camaraderie that you have in endurance racing. I think for any form of motorsport, you need help, you need friends, especially when you have a, a TCR-related uh, series, you have a lot of uh, uh, teams running same cars, so anyone will need favour at some point. In the Code 60, the race-leading Cupra 101 has stalled on the track. They have headed the field for by far the most part of the race, but will this be their Waterloo? I did not have any traction control and I could not select, uh, select a diff map. So I tried to uh, reset the car, but when I did it, uh, it was in neutral and I couldn't get in, in gear before it completely stopped. So I was down in the Eau Rouge uh, and in the Code 60, of course, but uh, I could only restart the car or put it in gear when it was completely stopped. So uh, for five seconds, I thought, uh, oh no, this is it and, uh, and uh, it, will, it could all be gone. The reset works and the Orange Cooper continues. Back to Green Flag Racing, Daryl Clark is finding Spa to be a real eye-opener. Uh, I didn't expect as much rain, to be honest. We come, I've come from New Zealand and um, at the moment we're just coming out of winter, so I kind of figured that it was going to be a little bit warmer than 8 degrees, but no, it's been good. It hasn't finished yet, still a few more hours to go.
21 hours completed. That's 417 laps, by the way. And the classes are forming up nicely. It's three pros, two pro ams, and two ams form the top positions. That means the overall top three identical to the pro class. Six laps of elite now for the Red Camel 101 Cupra. Then the 308 of DG Sport and the top car number 131. In the Pro-Am category, Vitaminisa number 65 leads ahead of the AC Motorsport number 8. Teamwork Huff number 852 in third. And in the Am, Burton Racing, Lestrop Racing second. And the Baz Cooten 125 is third in Am and 10th overall. This is endurance. You know, this is endurance. You got the different conditions, rain, maybe snow. I don't know. It feels snowy to me because I'm from Florida, right? But we'll, uh, we'll have a good time. This is endurance. Long stints, very hot in the car. All the guys I raced are very good, so I'm very worn out. Good stuff. Love it. TCR Spa 500 will return in 2020 in the first week end of May. Any drivers sure to return? Oh, definitely. Uh, I think the endurance format for TCR is quite uh, quite nice, and this is our first time in in, uh, in endurance with TCR. Uh, I think the organisation has been fantastic. So, if it, if they do it, maybe we might come back again because it might not rain. But who knows? Right? This is Spa. I would really like to do the Spa 500 again. I think it's a really great race. Uh, hopefully with a little bit more cars next year. But looking at the date, it will be in, uh, in May, so in the summer should be better. And uh, let's hope we can fight uh, with more cars on track. It's been a success. I mean, we really enjoyed the parade in Malmedy in the city and uh, good to fight against the best drivers and the best teams. Uh, so we hope to be strong again. I'm sure we will be back. It's a great event. Um, the atmosphere is, uh, is good. Uh, we are pretty good in the game. Uh, we have many drivers that are interested in these kind of uh, r uh, races. We have cars available, so um, I'm sure we will be there. I hope uh, I get the opportunity next year to race here, to race the TCR 500. And I'm really working on it, and uh, let's cross the fingers to see me behind the wheel again. On that same weekend in May, the 24-hour series will hold the 12 hours of Spa. Uh, we will probably do both. I'm not sure. We, I haven't talked to the crew about it. We will probably uh, do both. The car is sold now and we bought a new one, so this will be the first race with the new car. You know, we're going to run the Mercedes again full-time next year, and then in May this is a combined event with the 500. And I was a little bummed because I figured they would combine the two and then just let those guys keep going when the 12-hour was done. But apparently I guess it's going to be a separate race, so I'm going to try and put some stuff together and hopefully we can run the car again at that race. It's challenging here at Spa, uh, having a, a race in the night. It's really dark. You have to have very good drivers and with good skills. It's manageable, but it's a 24, it's a 23. Yeah, it's a good one. Ram leader, fourth overall for the Viper number 65 crew. That's not their final goal, though. I'm hoping that we can do better and I'm hoping that the weather become uh, better later on. Even though the weather forecast said it's going to be rain until finish of the race. In this race there's no limits to how long the driver can be in the car. This means that Ivo Broikas has just had the longest driving stint of his life. It was very, very, very long. Uh, I stayed in the car for uh, uh, three and a half hour, even a little bit more. Uh, that was really tough. Uh, we had changing conditions. It was sometimes not wise to, uh, to change drivers. And the last time we went back to, I have to think, to uh, Slicks. Uh, and we put a, fuel, a full fuel tank. So yeah, only to come in to, because you're tired, you don't do that. So uh, I stayed out the whole stint. Uh, but the last five uh, laps, uh, I had uh, problems with uh, concentrating. Spa is famous for changeable weather conditions. But not every driver has taken pleasure with the rain from earlier this morning. If the conditions are really tricky, then it's, uh, it's not always so enjoyable. Then it's, uh, you just want to keep the car in one piece and do a good job. So, yeah, it, it was a difficult morning. The unpredictability of the weather makes it hard for the teams to make the correct tyre decisions. The weather conditions have been uh, the worst kind, where, where it's not wet, it's not dry, it's something in between, and then it's wet and then it's dry. And To have the right tyre choice is not easy, uh, and especially we have an amateur crew in the car, 
They've done a really good job and we're still fighting for the podium in the class. Viper Nisa Racing have come to Spa and at the moment lead the Pro-Am class and they're chasing down third position overall. We didn't have any expectations about uh, finishing well. Uh, all we wanted to do is just finish the race and if we had placed that would be fantastic but uh, if, if we didn't and we, but we finished the race it would be good as well. During the race we were quite lucky with uh, the Coast 60 on a few occasions. Uh, we had some issues with the car as well, but which we managed to fix. Um, I think we've got another, what, 20 minutes left. Just bring the car home and uh, you know, go on the podium. The checkered flag will come out based on the time elapsed from when we started. So at three o'clock, the checker will drop. But about 15 minutes before that, the Leicester of 110 is off track. I think uh, one of our drivers just had a bit of an off and uh, we don't know what he got back up on track after that and everything seemed fine but for some reason he went off again uh, not sure if it was mechanical damage or whether it was uh, f flooding of the track or whatever it was but he ended up in the wall again and the car was uh, quite damaged quite badly uh, so we couldn't finish the race you feel empty uh, but then again uh, we still managed to get the result and prove that we are quite good contenders in at least with, uh, with in both the senior class and in the amateur class. So we are very happy with that. During the Code 60, the teamwork Huff number 22 stalled and needs to be recovered. Unfortunately, the marshals did that so quickly that we can end the race under a green flag. Good news for anybody who have had problems is the regulations in this TCR 500 mean that even if you don't cross the finish line, you're still in the standings. Fortunately, we get points, or we still get the P2 result thanks to the Quantic rules, which allows you to classify even though you only finish 60% of the race distance. In fact, only five entries didn't make the 60% mark of the race. One car certain to end up on the top step of the podium, the Red Camel number 101 Cupra, with their drivers Rick and Ivo Broikers, Tom Coronel and Pepe Oriola. They did a great job, led the race for 446 laps. They're not going to give it away in the last few seconds. And the Dutch team brings their car across the line as victors in the first TCR Spa 500. A dominating victory, a happy team on the pit wall and WTCC driver Pepe Oriola excited about this TCR 500 race. It's amazing, I, I mean, like, the atmosphere is, is a t-shirt concept, uh, everybody's helping each other, and I think that we, there's a lot of teams uh, with a lot of potential, and, but we just uh, did better than the other ones. Uh, I'm not saying that we were the fastest one, which it was okay or, or, or pace, but we were really smart on the, on the entries and uh, when we had to pit using the code 60s. So it's an uh, achievement of the team and, and of course uh, of the drivers. Yeah, it was very exciting obviously because it was a bit drier in the beginning and towards the end it was getting wet, more wet and you know, of course it feels really good once you finish it. But I enjoyed it, it was really lovely to go through it, you know. Uh, the last thing was difficult because uh, we have uh, heavy rain. We have to keep focus and to finish the race, it was the main point, so we are here, that's good. Yesterday they started in second position on the grid. The team from Red Camel Jordan.nl have proved their worth and the drivers of the number 101 Cupra are on the top step of the podium. Second, the 308DG Sport Competition Peugeot. Third, the number 131 Cupra of Top Car Sport with Baz Cooten Racing. In the pro category, the top three identical, so all those teams get a second trophy for their class positions. And as the Red Camel team had a minimum of three drivers from the same country, they collect the EXO-sponsored TCR Nations trophy for the Netherlands. In Pro-Am, the Viper Nisa Racing win the race with their number 65 Cupra, just two laps ahead of the Audi number eight from AC Motorsport third, the 852 Teamwork Huff Motorsport entry. And they have the trophies to show for it. In the AM class, the Burton 46 Peugeot 308 saw the chequered flag and won the category, flanked on the podium by the 110 squad from Leicester Racing Team and the 125 team from Baz Kooten Racing. That makes the Baz Kooten team the only squad to pick up two trophies as the Top Car 131 was also run by them.
What a fantastic weekend this was at the circuit of Spa Francorchamps. The first TCR 500, a great success, and we'll be back here in May 2020. Can't wait that long for a proper endurance race. Crevendic, the race organiser this weekend, also has 24-hour endurance races coming up in Austin, Texas in November and Dubai in January. You will also see the start of the TCR Middle East series. For more information, go to 24hseries.com. See you next time.